roadway coming through. Nuclear weapons are some of the strongest things that have ever been made, but how can they be moved safely? From heavily fortified military sites to top secret locations, this process needs a lot of planning and strict security. In this video, we'll look at specialized vehicles made to deal with threats, advanced communication systems that keep everyone on high alert, and the extensive training that staff goes through to be ready for any situation. Join with us as we look into the different levels of security that keep these weapons out of the wrong hands and the rules that govern this sensitive operation. the transportation of nuclear weapons. There are some of the most secure buildings on the globe that are designed to prevent unwanted access at any cost. These facilities are where nuclear weapons are stored. However, there are situations in which these weapons need to be moved from one location to another within the organization. This indicates that a mobile explosive weapon that is capable of destroying an entire city is being transported along routes that are used by all of us on a daily basis. Considering the magnitude of the possible dangers, this poses a tremendous challenge to the security community. The government of the United States has taken action to solve this issue by establishing a specialized organization that is responsible for monitoring the transportation of nuclear items. This organization operates according to stringent rules in order to guarantee the secure transportation of these potent weapons. The transportation procedure requires individuals with extensive training as well as specialized vehicles that are specially equipped to withstand a variety of dangers. These precautions are absolutely necessary in order to keep the general public safe and to forestall any potential mishaps that may occur while the vehicle is in transit. For the purpose of ensuring the safety of the operation, it is necessary to maintain constant observation and to coordinate with the local law enforcement as the convoy travels through populous areas. This intricate system is a reflection of the serious nature of nuclear security, and it emphasizes that even while in transportation, the highest care must be taken to keep these destructive weapons from falling into the wrong hands. Before we move forward, let's pause to consider nuclear transportation via helicopter. An image recently went viral. The image shows several helicopters together carrying a massive machine. What do you think about this image? Is there any country transporting the nuke with helicopter, or is it a hoax? What do you think? The Convoy Structure For the purpose of carrying nuclear items, we have a convoy that has been specifically constructed for this purpose. The precise arrangement of the convoy shifts depending on the path that is being taken and the degree of sensitivity of the cargo that is being transported. Although it is not always necessary, it is common practice for local law enforcement vehicles to accompany the convoy at both the front and the rear. This is especially true in urban areas. The presence of these police officers serves to improve security, making it possible for the convoy to go swiftly through areas with a high population density without having to halt. The convoy reduces the likelihood of any potential threats and guarantees a more secure journey for its extremely delicate cargo by ensuring that it maintains a continuous flow. Not only does the convoy include local law enforcement, but it also includes specialist vehicles and staff who have been trained specifically for the purpose of safeguarding the nuclear items. It is essential to implement multiple layers of security measures in order to discourage any potential dangers that may arise during transportation. This will ensure that the cargo is protected from any unwanted access. The rigorous planning and cooperation that have taken place exemplify the crucial relevance of nuclear security in the process of protecting these deadly weapons as they move through everyday contexts. Armored Bearcat Vehicles The convoy is held in place by a number of armored vehicles, which are referred to as Bearcats, directly behind the police escort. These vehicles have been constructed with the express purpose of withstanding assaults, thereby offering a safe atmosphere for the federal agents who are assigned the responsibility of safeguarding the radioactive payload. 
Their construction is bulletproof, which ensures that agents may function safely while maintaining their readiness to respond to any dangers that may arise. The Bearcats are equipped with several gun ports, which enable agents to engage prospective attackers without putting themselves in harm's way or putting themselves in danger. Agents are provided with a variety of firearms, such as handguns, shotguns, and assault rifles within the facility. This ensures that they have sufficient firepower to eliminate any potential dangers that may occur. In certain configurations, a heavy machine gun that is protected by a plate is installed on top of a Bearcat. This considerably improves the defensive capabilities of the convoy, despite the fact that the primary objective of these measures is to dissuade and protect against attacks. The entire strategy is centered on preventing potentially harmful circumstances from arising in the first place. The agents that are part of the convoy are always on high alert and make use of sophisticated communication devices in order to maintain coordination and keep themselves informed about any potential dangers that may arise along the road. Not only does this multi-tiered security system protect the nuclear cargo, but it also serves as an illustration of the substantial preparation and resources that are allocated to ensuring that nuclear cargo is transported in a secure manner. Communication and Coordination During a typical transit, the agents who are seated in the armored vehicles take a proactive approach to security, putting an emphasis on both prevention and preparation. Each vehicle functions as a mobile communication center and is outfitted with sophisticated audio gear that enables three unique levels of communication. This ensures that the convoy is coordinated in a smooth manner throughout its entirety. On the first level, the cars are able to communicate with one another in a direct manner. When agents are able to speak with one another across vehicles, they are able to immediately discuss and put into effect a plan of action in the event that an unexpected occurrence occurs. These individuals are able to efficiently respond to any dangers by maintaining continual communication with one another and modifying their plans as required. Agents on the second level make it a habit to keep in touch with other supporting forces that are present in the area. The significance of this connection lies in the fact that it enables a more comprehensive understanding of the circumstances surrounding the convoy. Any nuclear transportation must be accompanied by a minimum of seven armed vehicles in order to comply with safety rules and guarantee the highest possible level of protection. Despite the fact that only five of these vehicles are visible in the convoy, the existence of two additional cars is essential to the overall strategy. These two vehicles are strategically placed at remote monitoring areas, often a few miles ahead of the main convoy. They are expected to keep a close eye on the situation. As advanced scouts, it is their responsibility to traverse the route in search of any potential dangers or threats that may be present before they have the opportunity to influence the convoy. This forward-looking approach improves situational awareness, which in turn enables ground forces to make decisions that are fully informed and based on information that is current at the moment. In addition to ensuring that all agents continue to be connected and informed, the tiered communication structure not only improves the operational efficiency of the convoy, but also maximizes its effectiveness. By placing an emphasis on synchronization and situational awareness, the convoy is better prepared to deal with any difficulties that may develop while it is being transported. This all-encompassing communication strategy is a prime example of the painstaking planning and attention to detail that are the foundation of the safe transportation of nuclear materials. It guarantees that the highest possible security requirements are maintained at all times through its implementation. Central Command and Protocols the commander who is positioned in one of the vehicles that are accompanying the nuclear transporter plays an essential part in ensuring that the operation continues to be performed in a secure manner. In order to obtain the most recent information regarding any potential dangers, the commander makes contact with the remote agents who have been strategically placed along the route every 30 minutes. By maintaining this level of contact, the convoy is able to remain aware of the environment around them, which enables them to make alterations to their plans in a timely manner, should they be required. This division of the convoy into separate groups offers a substantial advantage in terms of maintaining the durability of the communication system. 
the two remote agents would continue to be active in the event that something were to happen to the five vehicles that were visible within the convoy. They would be able to communicate vital information or ask for assistance. In high-pressure situations where every second counts, having this redundancy is absolutely necessary. In addition to the contact that takes place between the commander and the remote agents, there is also a third level of communication that takes place with the Transportation and Emergency Control Center that is situated in Albuquerque, New Mexico. This facility acts as the heart and soul of all nuclear transportation operations that take place within the United States. The movement of all trucks transporting high-risk goods is monitored by staff members who have received extensive training, and they look to ensure that these vehicles are outfitted with real-time intelligence. The control center has the authority to request quick help from local law enforcement in the event that an attack takes place, or if a convoy comes across an unanticipated threat. This capacity enables prompt and coordinated reactions to any mishaps that may occur, which further enhances the security of the nuclear materials that are in transit. The comprehensive planning and stringent safety measures that regulate the transportation of nuclear materials are exemplified by the combination of regular updates, the redundancy in communication systems, and constant contact with the centralized control center, respectively. In order to ensure that the highest possible security standards are maintained, it is necessary to make certain that every layer of communication is operational and that support is immediately available. This will ensure that the entire operation is protected from any potential dangers. Security Engagement Protocols a comprehensive protocol is adhered to in the extremely unlikely event that the control center determines that it is necessary to deploy additional police support for a nuclear transfer. This is done in order to guarantee the safety and integrity of the organization. A dispatcher is responsible for communicating the pre-established passwords to both the crew of the convoy and the local law enforcement authorities. This protocol comprises a pre-established set of passwords. The usage of passwords is an essential security feature that enables both parties to authenticate each other's identities upon arrival. Passwords are used to protect sensitive information. When law enforcement arrives at the scene, both the agents in the convoy and the officers in the police force will verbalize their respective halves of the password. Because of this stage, any possible attackers will be prevented from impersonating law enforcement in an effort to gain access to the sensitive cargo. This step is extremely important. In order to ensure the safety of nuclear materials while they are in transit, the importance placed on password verification is illustrative of the painstaking planning that is involved. The agents are required to adhere to this password policy, which is just one component of a complex set of safety measures that they must follow in several different scenarios. The protocols in question are not only formalities. Rather, they are intended to offer numerous layers of protection, thereby guaranteeing that the operation is protected against a variety of dangers. In order to strengthen the defense of the convoy, the strong system combines military might with strategic planning. When everything is said and done, the combination of these standards results in the formation of a strengthened security framework that not only safeguards against potential dangers, but also makes it easier to move nuclear materials without risk. The authorities concerned ensure that they are always one step ahead of any potential hazards by continuously refining these procedures. This allows them to maintain the highest possible standards of security. The Safeguard Transporter the Safeguard Transporter, which is a vehicle that was made to order and is designed exclusively for the purpose of delivering nuclear bombs, is located at the heart of the convoy. Considering that its shell is made of metal that is very durable, it is resistant to the majority of the tools that are commonly used. Under no circumstances could the hull be breached by any amount of cutting or sawing, and even major accidents are unlikely to impair its integrity. This would prevent any potentially hazardous materials from leaking out into public highways or the areas surrounding them. Furthermore, Fire resistance is a primary focus of the design. The hull is capable of withstanding severe heat for extended periods of time, which guarantees that even fire-based attacks are rendered ineffectual. A key layer of security is provided for the delicate cargo that is contained within this sturdy building, which makes it nearly hard for unauthorized individuals to get access. 
The tremendous stakes involved in carrying nuclear goods are reflected in the fact that the Safeguard Transporter is not only constructed to withstand physical assaults, but it is also designed to provide the highest possible level of safety for these contents. Because of its powerful presence within the convoy, it acts as a strong deterrence against potential assailants, highlighting the stringent safety requirements that are implemented for missions that involve such a high level of difficulty. For the purpose of ensuring that nuclear weapons are kept safe throughout their voyage, this truck serves as a monument to the cutting-edge technology and painstaking preparation that are utilized in the process of protecting some of the most hazardous chemicals in the world. Driver and Cargo Safety A high level of safety is afforded to the driver of the Safeguard Transporter because the vehicle is outfitted with bulletproof glass that is installed in the windshield as well as the side windows throughout the vehicle. For the purpose of protecting the driver from potential dangers, this feature is absolutely necessary. It guarantees that the driver will continue to be protected from missiles and assaults. In addition, the doors of the transporter may only be opened from the inside, which further strengthens the security of the vehicle by preventing unwanted access from the outside. Considering that the transporter weighs an amazing 25 tons, its substantial structure may at first appear to be a disadvantage when it comes to making fast maneuvers that involve evasion. Nevertheless, the design finds a way to make effective use of this weight to its advantage. The huge bulk contributes to the car remaining on the ground, which means that a tremendous amount of force would be necessary to cause it to topple over. The capacity to maintain this stability is absolutely necessary, especially when navigating through potentially hazardous situations. The truck is outfitted with small explosives that are fastened to the axle bar underneath it in the event that a significant emergency occurs. It is possible to detonate these explosives in the event that the situation gets serious. This will result in the axle being destroyed, which will bring the vehicle to a complete halt. Because of this, the transporter is rendered effectively immobile, making it extremely difficult for anyone to remove it from the premises. In the event that someone attempted to do so, they would find themselves dragging a hefty metal mass along the road without experiencing any wheel assistance. In addition, the cargo hold is protected by doors that are only accessible in high security zones that have been designated for that purpose. In order to unlock these doors, electronic keys that are owned by the United States military are necessary. Through the implementation of this multi-layered security system, the possibility of unwanted access to the nuclear materials that are being carried is considerably reduced. The entire convoy is being watched from above by two military helicopters from the United States of America, which adds an additional degree of surveillance. By providing a bird's-eye view of the mission, these aircraft make it possible to conduct surveillance in real time and to react quickly to any new risks that may pose themselves. Considering that would-be attackers are fully aware of the implications of engaging a convoy while it is under such close monitoring, their presence acts as a significant deterrent against any prospective attacks that may be launched against it. Not only does the National Nuclear Security Administration, NNSA, take its responsibilities very seriously, but it is also remarkable that they have never lost a single weapon while it was in transit. The efficiency of the substantial security procedures that are implemented during nuclear transport missions is demonstrated by this flawless track record. For the purpose of preserving the greatest possible standards of safety and security, each convoy is methodically planned and carried out. This helps to guarantee that critical supplies arrive at their destination without any incidents. Taking everything into consideration, a comprehensive defensive strategy is created when a mix of advanced security protocols, aerial monitoring, and sturdy vehicle design is utilized. In light of the gravity of the situation at hand, this multi-pronged strategy highlights the significance of ensuring the safety of nuclear materials while they are in transit, which will eventually contribute to the protection of both national and international security. Intruder Response Mechanism In the extremely unlikely event that someone is able to break into the cargo hold of the transporter, an automatic defensive system will activate and spray a thick foam on any individuals who have attempted to break in. This foam has been developed with the express purpose of significantly impeding movement, effectively attaching them to the ground and reducing their capacity to escape or take action under any circumstances. 
In the event that the foam is unable to eliminate the danger, the system has the capability of increasing its levels of response by administering a significant electric shock all over the grip. With this additional layer of defense, any remaining attackers will be rendered unable to carry out their attacks in a prompt and efficient manner. These procedures are a component of a comprehensive security plan that aims to prevent unauthorized access to materials that are considered to be the most sensitive and harmful possible. Additionally, the combination of the foam and the electric shock serves to emphasize the commitment to the protection of nuclear weapons and to dissuade any potential breaches that may occur. Having such extensive defense mechanisms demonstrates the extent that the authorities go to in order to guarantee that these devastating weapons continue to be secure, so protecting not just the general people, but also the integrity of the national security system. Through the utilization of cutting-edge technology, the transporter continues to function as a mobile fortress, always prepared to deal with any potential danger that may develop while it is in transit. Comprehensive Security Measures These strict security measures guarantee that nuclear bombs, which are among the most deadly technologies ever created, will continue to be safe and inaccessible to individuals who are not allowed to possess them. There are two military helicopters from the United States that are constantly monitoring the convoy. These helicopters offer a thorough aerial view of the operation and are keeping an eye out for any potential dangers that may come from aerial sources. Over the course of its entire existence, the National Nuclear Security Administration NNSA, has never experienced the loss of a single weapon while transporting it to a base. This is an outstanding record that the NNSA has maintained. The efficiency of the stringent security protocols that are already in place is demonstrated by this remarkable accomplishment. All of the components of the transportation system, from armored trucks to real-time communication, collaborate to ensure that there are no security breaches. A formidable obstacle is created by the combination of ground and airborne support, which makes it difficult for any attempt to compromise the convoy to be successful. As a consequence of this, the thorough planning and execution of these transportations bring to light the devotion to national security, as well as the significance of preventing these lethal weapons from falling into the wrong hands. In order to demonstrate how seriously the authorities consider their obligation to protect nuclear materials, the complete approach to security ensures that these materials are kept secure at all times when they are in transit. The crew of the convoy receives a series of passwords, which are then communicated to the local police forces that are arriving at the location through the channel of the dispatcher. Upon the arrival of the law enforcement officials, both parties will share their respective sections of the password, such as Agent Bravo, in order to verify the identities of the other. Through the use of this process, opponents are prevented from appearing to be law enforcement in order to obtain access to the nuclear cargo. This password system is just one of many protocols that together comprise a comprehensive network of safety precautions. These protocols are designed to govern the actions that agents take in a variety of different situations. These protocols are absolutely necessary in order to keep the transport secure and to guarantee that all parties engaged in the transport are able to communicate effectively with one another. A sturdy framework that improves the safety of the convoy is produced as a consequence of the combination of strict instruction and defined procedures. This structure not only enhances the capabilities of the military, but it also acts as an essential deterrent against any prospective dangers that may become apparent. The meticulous design and execution of these protocols exemplify the seriousness with which the authorities regard the transportation of nuclear materials. This serves to emphasize the significance of avoiding unwanted entry and protecting the protection of the general population. By implementing these steps, the integrity of the operation is maintained and the risks that are associated with moving goods that are considered to be dangerous are greatly significantly reduced. Training and Drills The agents and law enforcement professionals who are involved in nuclear transport operations undergo routine training and drills in order to guarantee the highest possible level of safety during these operations. These exercises are intended to prepare participants for a range of situations that may occur, as well as to reinforce the protocols that have been developed and to improve their ability to work together. 
By taking part in these drills, all of the individuals engaged are able to acquire a comprehensive comprehension of their respective roles and duties, which is essential for efficient coordination in high-pressure circumstances. In addition to tabletop exercises, simulated drills, and live fire situations, the training also includes a variety of other formats. Participants are able to explore potential issues and develop strategies in a controlled environment through the use of tabletop activities when they participate. In order to provide staff with the opportunity to practice their answers in more realistic conditions, simulated drills are used to incorporate real-world dynamics. In the event that they are required, live fire drills concentrate marksmanship and tactical maneuvers. This helps to ensure that agents are ready to deal with any armed threats that may arise. The maintenance of a high level of readiness requires ongoing training as a necessary component. Following each activity, debriefings offer vital information into what aspects of the exercise were successful and what aspects could use some improvement. When it comes to improving the overall effectiveness of the training and refining the procedures, feedback is an essential component. Additionally, education that is continual ensures that people are kept up to date on the most recent breakthroughs in security and threat assessments, allowing them to adjust their training to handle new difficulties as they arise. These workouts also have the additional benefit of fostering team camaraderie. Engaging in consistent practice helps to cultivate trust and collaboration among members of a team, which in turn enables them to function more efficiently as a unit. This kind of friendship is absolutely necessary in high-pressure situations, where relying on one another can make a big difference in the outcome. Agents and law enforcement personnel need to be adequately prepared to respond appropriately to a variety of circumstances, and the training and drills that are done for nuclear transport operations are essential for this preparation. During these crucial operations, they improve readiness, teamwork, and overall security by continuously practicing and evaluating their performance. Every measure is put in place to guarantee the security of these formidable weapons, from the use of high-tech vehicles and stringent protocols to the intense training that operators receive. Share your thoughts in the comments. Please subscribe if you found this adventure enjoyable.